Yo everyone, what is going on? Welcome to another video and another day in the life. But yeah, in today's video you are going to see some easy low calorie high protein meals as usual. You are going to see some tips on how to grow your biceps and you are also going to see some pizza from my favourite takeaway in the world. So the time is quarter past nine in the morning. I have finished a workout that I will be showing you a little bit later on uh, because right now it is time for some super low cal huevos rancheros. So for those of you who do not know what huevos rancheros is, it is a Mexican inspired breakfast uh, that consists of eggs, tomatoes, onions, peppers uh, and a few other bits. It is very spicy, it is very filling uh, and I am going to do my best not to screw it up. So the first thing I'm going to do is add 50 grams of a chopped up onion to a pan and let it fry away for about 5 minutes or so. Alright, 5 minutes has passed, very quickly may I add time flies when you're having fun. Uh, so I am going to add 200 grams of chopped tomatoes, or tomatoes, half a red and half a yellow pepper, chopped up into strips, 45 grams of spinach leaves, and I'm gonna add a bunch of seasoning too. So we have some smoked paprika, sea salt, we have ground cumin, and also some cayenne, cayenne, whatever, pepper. And now I am just gonna let it simmer away for about five minutes. Okay, now I'm gonna make a little hole or a little well in the middle and crack an egg into it, like so. And while the egg is frying away, I'm gonna add 200 mils of egg whites to another pan. All right, so this is how we're looking at the moment. The egg is good to go, even though the yolk has formed terribly and the egg whites are good to go as well. So what I'm gonna do is transfer the egg whites to this pan and make a little rim uh, around the huevos rancheros. And boom, breakfast is good to go. And to replace uh, the tortilla wraps that you usually get with huevos rancheros, I'm gonna use these Slim's multi-grain pops. So per pop, there is only 18 calories. You can get like a bunch of different flavors. These ones are honey wheat flavor. I know you can get an onion flavor as well. And they are super handy for dishes like this. And if you can't find them in your super value, I know Dunn's do their own version as well. I think they're called Brohees or something like that. And I have seen them in Tesco before as well. All right, need to make sure I don't burn the hand off myself. Looks pretty good. It kind of reminds me of something that you would get on holidays for like breakfast or lunch or something like that. Like they come down with this thing and you're like, all right, we have a nice chunk of egg on this one. Mm. Really good. Definitely recommend this. It does take a little bit longer than your average breakfast to make, so it could be like a weekend breakfast kind of thing. Yo, people, we have gone back in time. It is 8.30 a.m., uh, and I am in the middle of an arm session, and I want to give you two tips uh, in relation to bicep training. So tip number one is including an exercise in your workout routine, and uh, that involves rotating your forearms. And this is because, as well as flexing the elbow, the bicep has another action, and that is forearm rotation, or it's called forearm supination. And this is actually really easy to test out. So all you have to do is get one arm like this, place it at maybe 90 degrees, and simply just rotate your forearm like so, and put one finger on your bicep, and you will see that when you rotate your uh, arm upwards, your bicep kind of activates a little. You can feel it get a little bit harder. And the most common example of an exercise that involves forearm rotation is the uh, bicep curl. So as you can see, I am starting each rep with my palms facing each other like so, and as I bring the dumbbells upwards, uh, I rotate my forearm, and my palms are facing upwards at the top of each rep. And you don't necessarily have to include an exercise with forearm rotation in every session that you train your biceps, but you could just do it from time to time, maybe once per week, maybe in a specific training block, etc. And then my second tip is in relation to combining exercises. So if I'm doing two bicep exercises in a session, I will always make sure uh, that one of the exercises is with my arms down by my side like this, or even behind my body, 
and the other exercise is with my arms up at an angle like this. And this is because there are two different parts or two different heads of the bicep and you are going to be biasing either one depending on what angle you have your arm at. So when you are doing exercises with your arms down by your side or behind your body, you're going to be targeting the outside portion of the bicep a little bit more or the long head. Then when you're doing an exercise with your arms up at an angle, you're going to be targeting the inside portion of the bicep or the short head. So an example of this might be combining the incline resistance band curl. So as you can see, my arm is angled slightly behind my body and I am biasing ooh, uh, the long head of the bicep with a high resistance band curl. So as you can see here, my arm is up at an angle and hence I am biasing the short head of the bicep. Okay, it is a lunchtime in the Clark household and you know when you're having one of those days where you're like, I am gonna make a really, really nice lunch today. I'm gonna spend a lot of time on it. The presentation is gonna be on point and I am gonna savor every last bite. Yeah, today is not one of those days. So instead of doing that, I'm gonna be having something that is gonna take me approximately 3.5 seconds to make. So I'm gonna add 300 grams of 0% yogurt to a bowl and these light and free yogurts that you get from Tesco are so, so good. So per tub, there is only 81 calories and 14 grams of protein. Then I'm gonna add 10 grams of chocolate brownie whey protein and mix it in. Next up is 200 grams of mixed fruits from Tesco and I microwave these uh, for about 30 or 40 seconds just so they are not completely frozen. And 20 grams of granola to top it off, but no more because granola is ridiculously high in calories. And a very cheeky last minute addition is going to be some maple syrup, some zero calorie maple syrup, I should say, from the Skinny Food Company. All right, taste test. Probably would have been an eight out of 10 without the maple syrup, but the maple syrup just adds at least an extra point. Solid nine out of 10. This is unreal. Frozen strawberries are actually the worst. They are by far my least favorite fruit in this whole mix. I don't know what it is. I just, I don't know. I think it's because they're so big. But yeah, if you are someone that is usually kind of tight on time, then this meal is a good option for sure. It's low in calories, high in protein, really filling and so tasty. All right, people, it is time for the main event of this video. The reason we are all here, I am going to order myself a big, juicy Domino's. Well, to be honest, it is not gonna be that big or that juicy either because I want to give you some very valuable information on how to order a low-calorie Domino's pizza. But before I continue, I do wanna say that sometimes you just wanna order the biggest, fattest pizza there is on the menu. And I think from time to time, that is acceptable no matter what diet you are on. Because let's be real, we all deserve that level of joy in our lives from time to time. But this is for the times when you are trying to be kind of good whilst being kind of bad. So let me take you through it step by step and let's build our own pizza. And the first thing that we are gonna start with is the base. So when you're trying to keep the calories of a pizza down, as a general rule, the thinner the base, the better because less dough equals less calories. But personally, I don't like going super thin because I do like a bit of girth to my pizza. Uh, so I go with the Italian style crust from Domino's and this is Thinner than the classic crust by a little bit, uh, but it is thicker than the thin and crispy crust. So although it's not gonna save you a huge amount of calories, it will save you some calories. Then step two is the cheese, and this is a no-brainer in my opinion. And if you're trying to keep the calories down, go with the reduced fat mozzarella as opposed to the normal mozzarella. It tastes no different in my opinion. You could give me a pizza with reduced fat mozzarella and a pizza with normal mozzarella, and I would struggle uh, to tell the difference, but again, it's gonna save you calories easy choice. Then step three is going to be your toppings and what I recommend is going with one meat topping and making the rest veg and this is because veg is going to be lower in calories than meat so we want the veg to make up the majority of the pizza but still leave a bit of meat so we can get that protein in. And if you go for a leaner meat like chicken or ham then it is going to be lower in calories again. And I can tell that you're a little skeptical right now. You're probably thinking this is going to be shit. Let's put the order in and we shall see and it is very sad when you know Domino's number off by heart. 
Oh, can I make an order for delivery, please? Sure. Can I have your phone number, please? Yeah, it is. Okay, perfect. What can I get you? Uh, could I get a... Oh, yes, that was so awkward. So I was setting like this whole scene up, like the camera, little table here, and the delivery guy like walked by my window and kind of looked in. And I bet you he was just thinking, what is about to happen in there? Well, let me show you what I got. And first things first, although I would usually absolutely destroy uh, this garlic dip, I am going to refrain today because in this little tub, there is like 169 calories in this little tub. And I am pretty sure that in the big tubs of these, there is almost 700 cals, so it is just crazy, even though it is so good. But yeah, I went for a small pizza with Italian-style crust, and as you can see, it is not that thin at all. I actually think it's a really nice thickness. Uh, I got reduced fat cheese. I went for barbecue base because I am a huge fan. Uh, and then for the toppings, I got tandoori chicken, I got sweet corn, I got jalapenos, and I got pineapple as well. And if you're one of those people that really likes to discuss whether pineapple goes on pizza or not, like... That debate is about 20 years old. Nobody cares anymore. Life has moved on. Stop talking about it. Very good. Mm. And in this pizza, there is about 660 calories and 45 grams of protein. And if you compare that to a pizza uh, with classic crust, with normal cheese, and with like four meat toppings, that easily has over 1,000 calories. So you are saving about 400 calories or more and still getting an extremely tasty pizza at the end. Last little look before I turn off the camera and get intimate with this pizza. Mm. Whoa. All right, everyone, I am going to wrap the video up there. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe, and make sure you comment down below and let me know as well. I am getting extremely close uh, to that 10,000 subscriber mark, which is weird. I'm pretty sure I was at like 5K a month ago. I don't know. It's just going so quick at the moment. But yeah, the thumbs up and the comments do really help, so please keep it going. I really, really appreciate it. And yeah, there is a big demand for the sweet version of the French toast that I made in my previous video, so what I'm gonna do is make that in my next video uh, along with some other tasty meals. So yeah, thanks again for watching everyone, and I will see you in the next video.